The city of Albuquerque has finally started a series of meetings to get people's your ideas on how to improve the police department. That's right. More than 100 people showed up to the first meeting last night, but none of them could actually say anything. You see, it was the first of 10 public forums where people are invited to share their concerns and suggestions. Topics include mental health, government and policies. The meetings will divide up into smaller groups. An independent facilitator mediates the discussion. It's not going to be you get your two minutes at a mic. That's not what we want. We want people at a table talking to each other. I care for the police officers just as much as I care for our civilians. You know, there's a lot of issues that we need to deal with. Now, there was no public comment last night, but people will be able to weigh in at the next meeting, which is next Monday. For a list of all the public meetings, go to krqe.com. More than two dozen Albuquerque police candidates are in new training. The training started yesterday. It includes the new crisis intervention protocol brought on by the Department of Justice after it investigated APD and its use of excessive force. Some current officers have also received extra training. The rest should have it by next spring. Albuquerque's Chamber of Commerce says it's had a hard time attracting businesses here since the federal government ripped into the police department. Now it is hoping that does not affect conventions too. Meeting planners from all over the U.S., more than a dozen states, got a sneak peek at the $25 million worth of renovations at the convention center yesterday. The mayor there cut the uh, proverbial tape. Uh, in the past, the convention center has brought in an average of 25 to 35 million bucks every year. Big events at the center are an important part of Albuquerque's economy. But the Chamber of Commerce says the Department of Justice's investigation, a scathing one, and the deadly shooting of James Boyd have hurt economic development here. We cannot create jobs in Albuquerque unless we have a safe community and the people who live here feel confident in our police force. Well, on Monday, Albuquerque's mayor and police chief met with business leaders and the Chamber of Commerce to talk about making systematic changes in the department. Now, as for the renovations at the convention center, check them all out with the slideshow at krqe.com. It is police lapel video we showed you a while back. A UNM law student in a scuffle with an APD officer. The student claims that he lost a testicle because of that scuffle and is now suing the city. Sir, sir, sir. Turn around, turn around, sir. Stop using your guest support. Don't kick me in the nuts. Oh, you get on the ground. Don't kick me in the nuts. Jeremy Martin was pulled over in April of suspicion of driving drunk. Officer Pablo Padilla says Martin was disobedient, but the police report never mentions anything about this confrontation caught on lapel camera. Martin's attorney says the officer lost his temper. Decides that it's appropriate to throw him into the back of the pickup, the back against the back of the pickup truck, then takes his knee and knees him so hard that it crushes one of his testicles. The man's attorney adds that the city and police leaders are to blame here, saying they knew the department had a problem with excessive force. This incident happened the same month the DOJ released a report on the department. Officer Padilla, by the way, remains on unpaid leave. Well, it looks like a pair accused of stealing from the apartment of a dead Marine in Albuquerque were caught on surveillance video red-handed. Investigators say these photos from the Embudo Tower security camera show Lorraine Brazil and Wesley Sinqua holding some stuff as they left Jeff Brueger's apartment. Police say they lived down the hall and had picked the lock to get into Brueger's place. Remember on special assignment, we told you how Brueger's apartment had been ransacked after he passed away last month. Police say Brazil and Sinqua stole artwork and jewelry. In fact, $40,000 worth of watches are still missing. The two were arrested on Friday. Well, this morning, investigators are getting a closer look at what may have led to a murder in the East Mountains. Eloy Leyva's body was found on Crest Road back on October 10th. According to court documents we got a hold of, he had been shot in the back three times. Danny Trujillo and Ignacio Gallegos are charged with his murder. They are still on the run this morning. Investigators think they were with Leyva's ex-girlfriend the night he was killed and that she is now dating one of the suspects. Uh, well, two parents in Oklahoma are very relieved this morning, to say the least, after their daughter is found safe right here in New Mexico. Authorities say that she actually ran away after meeting a boy online. She says that, and her mom, say that the, they are just glad the whole ordeal is over. We're relieved, um, but we, we still can't believe it all really happened. But. I cannot even fathom that she made it that far. I mean, with no driving experience. Alexis Bloom's mother says her daughter took the family car and left home on October 16th. 
Her mom says she wanted to meet a boy whom she met on mylol.com. Family members use the site to actually track down the 16-year-old's every move. Her mom says Alexis stopped at Best Buy stores in different cities along the way, logging into her account and updating her location. She made a stop in Las Vegas, Nevada, then made her way near Tucumcari. The teen was found on Saturday. And she would post anything random. She was looking for anybody to hang out with and have a good time. According to the girl's family, Alexis is now being held at a Clovis juvenile detention center. Well, 606, if you need free legal advice, listen to this. Lollapalooza is tomorrow. Lawyers, judges, and more will answer your legal questions for free. They'll answer everything from immigration and child custody questions to bankruptcy issues and more. They'll do it in both English and Spanish. Just head to the West Mesa Community Center from 3 to 6. Again, that's tomorrow. More and more New Mexicans are getting back to work, according to the Department of Workforce Solutions. The state's economy added thousands of jobs last month. 6,400 jobs were added, with the biggest gains in education, health services, and retail trade. The unemployment rate was 6.6 .6 last month. That is actually down 6.9 in September of last year. Hey, little by little, it's there much better go. than unemployment rate going Some up. Some positive news. Yep.